Terrace is under Sith control. Their fleet is orbiting the planet. They've declared martial law and they've imposed a planet-wide quarantine. My friends, my friends, while I wait for my COVID test results, I thought it would be a lot of fun to take off my face mask and talk with my friends about the most deadly virus in Star Wars history. Today, we are talking about the dreaded and deadly Rakgul Plague. The Rakgul disease was a tragic pandemic that infected many worlds throughout the galaxy. However, the plague is most commonly remembered for the role it played in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, being a major hurdle for the player's journey in the opening world of Taurus. The planet of Taurus was covered in massive skyscrapers. Much like Coruscant, the planet was a tall, dense city with a terribly pervasive social hierarchy. The city of Terrace was structured vertically, both in its skyscrapers and population, where the upper levels housed the planet's wealthy and powerful, and the lower down you went, the more downtrodden the inhabitants were. Yeah, this is our elevator. If you use it, you gotta give us something. Those unfortunate enough to live in the lower levels must face terrible dangers, such as gangs and crime lords that reign supreme below the skyline. Deep below the upworld, in the cold, dark shadow of the city, lies the terrible Undercity, the forgotten soil of the planet. The Undercity lies on the planet's natural surface, so far below the city that no light can escape the shadows of the skyscrapers to touch it. Because living conditions were so harsh and cruel, the citizens of Terrace considered the planet's natural surface totally uninhabitable, instead choosing to only live within the constructed monuments of their civilization. And it remained that way for centuries until overpopulation and crime posed a bit of a problem, with not enough prison space to house those who challenged the status quo of Taurus. We are the outcasts banished and reviled by those who dwell above. Laid into their history, the people of Taurus would begin to banish their outcasts and criminals to this cold, forgotten place, forcing them to a life of exile. When the outcasts of Terrace were exiled to the lower cities, the citizens knew that they would be destined for a life of hardship and darkness. What they did not expect, however, was that deep below the surface, something foul lurked in the shadows. An entity, a presence, a virus, dormant and waiting for a new supply of hosts to spread the contagion. Hurry, Hendar! Hurry! I can hear it coming! This was the Rakgul Plague, a vicious disease that turned its infected into mindless hosts for the virus, ravenous and devouring. The dreaded Rakgul virus was created thousands of years before by the Sith Lord Karnas Moore, who aimed to use the infection to transform his victims into a ruthless and ravenous disposable army. The first thralls were transformed through the use of a Sith talisman, which could be used to mutate any non-force sensitive into the despicable creature. No! This cannot be! No! Once transformed, the disease spread rapidly and ruthlessly, and those transformed could infect others through their claws and teeth. If the Rakul could make contact with the bloodstream, then it was only a matter of time before the transformation would begin. The talisman was eventually lost into the bowels of Taurus, deep below the upper city, where it would begin to take hold of anyone unfortunate enough to come into that dark world. The talisman was eventually retrieved from Taurus by the Jedi Knight Celeste Morn, who would take it from that world and entomb herself with the Sith Relic. She entered into cryosleep, sacrificing herself and unable to become one with the Force in order to prevent the talisman from affecting others. However, even with the talisman out of the way, the Rakgul Plague remained dormant on Taurus, deep below the city and biding its time, waiting for the era of the next pandemic. When the Teresian outcasts were banished to the Undercity, many of them went on excavations to find the hidden paradise promised below the surface, a place they called the Promised Land. It's, it's just a story to make little children smile. Rukil believes in it, though. It was while searching for this reprieve that they stumbled upon a holdout of the Rat Ghouls, and the dreaded infection took hold once more. The Rakul plague spread rampantly throughout the undercity of Taurus. However, inhabitants of the upper city refused to allocate resources into curing the problem, as it only affected the undercity and the outcasts. Forced to act alone, the members of the undercity established regulations and strict, cruel quarantines in order to limit the spread of this disease. The villagers infected with the Rakul disease have been quarantined beyond this gate. 
Citizens exploring or gathering resources outside the city gate would not be allowed to return if rat ghouls were anywhere within sight, and the gates would remain closed so they might be infected or devoured. Open the gate! Quickly! There isn't much time! Uh, I... I can't! The rat ghouls are too close! No! You can't do this! It isn't fair! No! Hindar, no! Citizens who were infected, or even suspected of being infected, within the city walls were isolated and relegated into a quarantine pen, where they would wait out their last hours before inevitably being transformed into one of those mindless beasts. If they were unfortunate enough to not be the first to show symptoms, they would certainly have been eaten by the others who succumbed first. Please, please, you have to help us. We beg you. We don't want to end up like the others. Please help us. We can't end up like them. While this quarantine was cruel and it seemed heartless, this was the only way to safely ensure that the plague did not infect everyone inside the Undercity, since even one citizen showing symptoms of the Rat Ghoul Plague could infect the entire population within hours. Unfortunately, however, members of the Lower City were not always able to properly diagnose the disease, and more often than not employed a better safe than sorry mentality. This meant that sometimes citizens who weren't actually infected with the disease would be trapped inside the quarantine pen among others who were infected, and it would only be a matter of time before the others turned and either devoured or infected the wrongly quarantined civilian. While the outcasts of the Undercity were mostly safe within their village, the terrible living conditions and overpriced third-party market meant that some citizens would be forced to venture out beyond the gates and risk exposure to the virus. Sadly, these excursions led to death more often than not, and the citizens were forced to suffer the scarce resources and shortages inside, compelled to rely on hoarders and opportunists to provide the resources that they needed to survive. My name's Saigir. I run a little salvage shop here. You want to buy something from my store? After the Endar Spire was shot down over the planet Taurus, Revan's former apprentice, Darth Malak, issued a total quarantine over the planet in order to secure the death or capture of the Jedi Bastila. Because Malak was sending his own men down to the surface, it became clear that they would be exposed to the deadly plague that ravaged this world. Malak funded research into finding a cure for this disease, which yielded near immediate results. While still within the early stages of the occupation, the Sith troopers had access to a serum which, when administered, could stop the effects of the disease in an infected person and kill the infection before the victim started showing symptoms. While the player of KOTOR had the option of what to do with the serum, the official canon path was that Revan gave the serum to the Upper City Doctor, who immediately began mass producing the cure and distributing it to anyone in need. Unfortunately, however, the cure was too late, discovered mere days before the city of Taurus was totally destroyed by the Sith. With the city in ruins, the disease continued to spread in the rubble and took hold of the planet once again. Over the next 300 years, the virus would reign supreme over the planet, slowly becoming the predominant life form present in this former city world. The Rakul Plague would fade into history over the next 3,000 years, the inhabitants of the galaxy all but writing off this ancient threat as no longer relevant or needing to be addressed. Because of this, the galaxy was not prepared when the virus returned thousands of years later. At the beginning of the Imperial Era, the ancient Jedi Celeste Morn was found in cryosleep and awakened by Darth Vader. When she realized that the Sith had taken over the galaxy, she was forced to use the talisman that she had sacrificed so much to stop, transforming Vader's stormtroopers into the mindless beasts and bringing the virus back to the galaxy once more. With the new patient Zero and the disease back once again, Vader had no choice but to flee, marooning Celeste and the newly infected to a desolate moon in space. Vader returns to Imperial space, biding his time until he knew what to do about the plague. Even though the infected were quarantined to this isolated rock in space, Darth Vader was not content to allow them to continue existing. For 20 years he waited, leaving them there until nine months after the Battle of Yavin when he would return to deal with the problem again. Vader sent another batch of stormtroopers to the world to test Selene Morn's strength. After she forces the shuttle to a crash and transformed his strike force into more rat ghouls, Vader knew that she was still a very real threat, deciding it best to leave her and her thrall on the moon with no way of escaping, effectively quarantining the problem forever. 
Unfortunately, the Rebel Alliance saw this as a potential tool to their advantage, and went to the moon hoping to use this disease as a bioweapon against the Empire, sending a scouting party to the moon. Only one member of the party survived, returning to the Rebellion, only to start showing symptoms and transform into a rat ghoul right before their eyes. The rat ghoul plague was once again on the march and would continue to wreak havoc across the galaxy for another hundred years. Without a cure crafted by Darth Malak, it would seem that the disease would not stop until it infected every living creature in the galaxy. The spirit of the talisman would eventually come to possess Cade Skywalker, and in a truly anticlimactic end to this massive virus that lasted for three millennia, Cade Skywalker pacified the talisman by simply rejecting its power, allowing it to remain dormant within him, never to infect a victim again. So tell me what you think about this deadly virus that rampaged through the Star Wars galaxy. Be sure to like the video if you found it informative, and subscribe to stay up to date with everything Star Wars related. And of course, leave your thoughts down in the comments below, because I want to know what you, my friends, have to say about our favorite galaxy far, far away. Star Wars is so much bigger than any one film or movie or book or expanded universe or canon. It's an entire universe that we get to imagine ourselves in together. And I do what I do because I want to share in that world with you. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, may the lore be with you now and forever. <laughs>